Okay, I'd like to call the meeting of the Joint Special School Building Committee to order. It's Thursday, April 18th, 2019. We're at the Nashua High School North Lecture Hall. Uh, the prayer will be read by Mr. Smith. Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Alderman Clee. Actually, Mr. Greeno has the book. So. Oh, Mr. Greeno, I'm sorry. I didn't get that. Mr. Greeno, would you read the prayer? Yes. Um, please stand. Almighty God, we have the high honor and the serious duty to manage the educational affairs of our beloved city. Fill us, O oh God, with the spirit of unity and understanding, which enables us to face our multiple problems with a serene mind, with justice and charity for all, so that any and all decisions made by us will always be for the betterment and greater happiness of all of our fellow citizens. So help us, God. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Dowd? Present. Alderman Wilshire? <coughs> um, Alderman Malitzi Goya? Alderman Jetty? Here. Alderman, Alderwoman Klee? Here. Ms. Oden? Here. Mr. Garino is here. Ms. Raymond? Mr. Mosher? Ms. Porter? Here. We have six present, six people present. Six is a quorum. Okay. Um, Alderman Wilshire is uh, out of town with her daughter. Uh, Alderman Lizzie Golia is working late and then getting ready for a trip tomorrow. So, um, and um, if, uh, Heather Raymond is not feeling well this evening. Okay, so if there are no objections, I'll waive the reading of the minutes of the prior meeting of March 28th, 2019, accept them and place them on file. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Remarks by the chairman. Uh, thank you for all coming tonight because we just made the quorum. Uh, uh, so it's usually more difficult in the summer, but vacation time is also uh, hard. Um, this evening, we're going to be having a presentation from the architect on their current status in the project. Um, and then uh, we have a couple of contracts that we have to approve for preliminary work, uh, site work. Um, so. That said, is there anything from school administration, Mr. Smith? Uh, Donna and I are just very happy to be here tonight. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So without further ado, I will turn it over to the architects from Harriman and let them give us an update on where they are at this point. Thank you, Rick. Hello everyone, Jamie Willett again, uh, Dan Bison's down here too. Um, I'm gonna tonight kind of give a, uh, a brief um, talk about a part of the full report that'll be coming in, in um, August, kind of describe what that part is. Uh, that particular piece um, is, is the building system analysis. Uh, we talked a little bit about it um, at the last meeting where we had done some walkthroughs and stuff. So talk a little bit about that, talk about the programming analysis, kind of where that's at right now, um, and schedule uh, going forward. And so, oh, and another thing that was um, talking about um, a few of the proposals that we've gotten and, and the progress on where that's gonna go. So um, anyway, so start here. So the building system analysis report, um, the first question is what is that report? Uh, some of you may have seen the Elm Street one that was done uh, prior, uh, prior to this uh, process kind of restarting for this whole thing here. Um, and it's, it's uh, basically a report 
that is a, a written document that describes um, the, the products that are in the building, um, the condition of them, um, recommendations on, on uh, what, should, what should be replaced, how old they are, uh, <clears throat> should you have an addition or renovations to the building. Um, so it, it gives you, it, it's, I'm gonna start over. <laughs> the, the report is um, a assessment of the systems of the building and the products that are used in the existing buildings. So we had walked through the schools and we looked uh, looked through all the product, all the stuff that was in the schools. Basically, made an assessment of those, and we're compiling them together to make recommendations. So this report will have recommendations. Should you, for possible future work that you may decide, CIP projects and whatnot. <clears throat> so who prepares the report? We have the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, structural, civil engineers all walked around. Um, the uh, architects, myself and, and others, uh, walked around. We worked with uh, facilities uh, as we were walking through and they pointed out things, helped us give us information that we needed uh, about each building. So this is Penichuk. Fairgrounds, and Elm Street. We've done it again, went through Elm Street again. We're updating that report even further than you saw it the last time. Um, <clears throat> but we, we use that information to prepare a report. <clears throat> How is the report used? So this is the important part. There, it's a roadmap for the, for the future facility improvements. So you may not, they may not be part of all this one project that we're working toward right now, but it, you'd be able to use the report as a whole and, and identify items that will be part of maybe future CIP project projects. Uh, maybe it's, maybe it is part of this project, uh, maintenance priorities and re additions, renovations, whatever it might be. So it's a roadmap for you to see what items are important now, ones that can shift later. And you know, pro maybe there's a, I'll use an example. <clears throat> you have a mechanical unit. It's been there for 30 years. It's dated. It's going to show that in the report, how long a typical lifespan of a, this unit might be, where does this unit fall in that line, when should it be replaced, how much longer life does it have, when, when should it uh, be replaced, um, should it be replaced during this project or as a, as a future project. <clears throat> so what is the status of that report right now? Well, we've done our facility investigation. We walked through, we've talked, like I said, we've talked to facilities. Um, we're still gathering some data, but right now we're starting to put those, th that uh, information onto paper. And with that report of the status of everything, we're actually using that to make recommendations. And those recommendations are compiling right now. <clears throat> Sorry, well, that's not me, but I. <laughs> yeah, it's usually a cell phone. <clears throat> the, uh, so that was the building facilities analysis. So that was looking at all the buildings. In addition to that, we're, we're doing some programming analysis, which is looking at the programs in the schools and, and the operations of the programs at the schools. <clears throat> There's four bullet points up there that we are either just have finished up talking about, we may have talked about it last time we were here, or things that are actually going to coming right up that we need to kind of finish up before we move on to really starting to lay out the next building. You have to know what the program is going to be and how it's going to lay out before we start doing some initial concept designs of, of a new building, additions, um, and looking, and also, or looking at Elm Street. <clears throat> so, the last thing we had talked, I think before we were here last time, we talked about uh, the career technical education programming meeting. Uh, just recently, uh, two weeks ago, um, Donna and the, uh, Donna here and the uh, special education uh, director uh, joined us in a uh, meeting and we talked about special, edu special, edu <clears throat> special education programming. Um, in the next following weeks, I think it's somewhat after vacation, we're working on, there was a question last time we were here about uh, when do teachers get to get their opportunity to uh, have input. So we're putting together a uh, programming survey right now um, 
that we'll be distributing uh, via the internet and uh, and uh, we'll solicit the feedback from them through that process. Um, it gives them, uh, feels like it's my phone, but it's not ringing or anything, but <laughs> I just want to be sure. <laughs> um, so that gives them the opportunity to have some uh, uh, anonymous, uh, you know, to be anonymous, if it should, should they choose to be, um, and provide true feedback on how they, you know, things are operating for them, what they see, um, components of the building that they find, um, you know, they want to comment on. <clears throat> so that's after school vacation. And then uh, following all those, or in that time range, we're going to have a, another programming meeting with, with each with each school and and and, the, and Donna and, and the group as a whole. So, kind of taking all that information that we've kind of gathered, regrouping it, and trying to uh, process that so that we can move into the next step, which would be to start laying out buildings, the buildings, the buildings or additions and, and renovations um, to make it work for the school. These schools. <clears throat> so schedule. This is a uh, this is a complex looking schedule, and I outline it on the next sheet. I'd look at this one real quick. Kind of hard to read up here on the screen, but this is uh, those those purple bullets are highlighting each uh, kind of component of this final report that'll be out in in August, and the little shaded purple bars, uh, the columns that go down to, down all across the side there are the months. Um, starting when we started to the end of the project, which is, I think it looks like it's, actually I have a little pointer here, I can use this. You know, this is uh, August right here, it looks like, and here's January, I believe. Um, and so these little shaded bar areas here are kind of telling you what we expected for a uh, timeline. And, and it's not perfect. I mean, some of these things aren't, you know, may not be completed right on this timeline because the mass of it may have been, but there's still things that we need to gather. So this, this yellow line is where we are today. Um, so, you know, it's not completed, but it's not, it's not far off. It's not, you know, we've got most of the stuff in these areas. So this group is kind of some of the, geez, I'm sorry, it's hard to read up on that screen. And, and I'll try to be a little brief and move on to the next slide, which is a little easier to read. But um, so the educational planning, and then this is the new uh, verse reno facility um, analysis. Um, you can see that's kind of where we are now in this area where we're talking about, um, you know, doing that re that report, that first report that I was kind of stumbling all the way through. That that's <laughs> that's right here, and then uh, some of the surveys and, and geotech we're, we're doing right now. We're programming that stuff now, or will be very shortly. Um, we'll talk about that in a moment, and then. Um, concept design. So you can see that kind of comes out here. So we, we need to have all this background information here pretty close to finalized or, or at least massive it finalized so that we can start those concept design, concept options. Um, and then that moves into costs and all that stuff down in this area. And then of course a report which would give you guys uh, the option to, to review or the chance to review and, and, and uh, make comments, recommendations and whatnot. So, next slide, easier to read. So these are the schedule highlights, kind of what's coming up um, and what maybe has, some of it's actually been done, but it's just kind of kind of the, the highlights of those specific areas. So the SPED meeting we've talked about, CETE meeting has been talked about, those have been completed. Teacher surveys, um, those are, like I said, coming out after the uh, vacation. Uh, programming administration meeting, that's the one that'll kind of group all this together and, and come back around. Uh, the new versus renovation analysis, that includes that facility analysis report that I was talking about. It looks at the, the existing schools and, and kind of conditions of them. Uh, the geotech surveys, um, I, believe, I believe Sean's speaking about those a little bit today, um, but the actual geotech and surveys should be happening around mid-spring to help give us our information um, to make some further decisions. Um, and then the traffic engineer, I believe we're soliciting proposals. Uh, we owe Sean some verbiage that we're working on, we're working on today, and, and tomorrow we should be able to start pulling something to him so that we can get those going. <clears throat> Beyond that, you know, once you kind of get those groups 
closed up, we'll be able to move into the concept design, initial concept options coming out and concept development. And then I think I stated before, the financial analysis. Um, we got, we're about 90% on background info, but the full analysis and study will kind of happen after these all three groups happen. Uh-oh. Oh, look what I did. <laughs> yeah, I could still make it operate. It's just going to look funnier. <clears throat> um, Connect right there. You can get the full thing again. What, what's that? You see where the red dot is? Yeah, I don't know how to. Just I don't click have a, on it with a mouse. I don't have a mouse with me. Nope. Oh. Yeah. This is the last. This is the last thing, anyway. So, the last piece right here. The report in, in August. That's that. Okay. So it looks like you know I I, I wanted to say kind of here is. It looks like there's not a lot happening. We don't have a ton to present. I'm kind of presenting the stuff we're gonna be showing you shortly, um, but it's because all this background stuff has to happen before we can really start coming up with some plans and designs that show that look interesting to everybody. You know, I mean, some of this stuff you see, you, you, you won't see it until you see it, and then you'll be then you'll be yeah, bring you know bring you to fruition of what what's uh, coming. So <clears throat> it involves the data analysis and collection, so they can do the final report. Um, so and that takes time, and that's what they're into right at the moment. Uh, are there any questions based on the presentation? Yes. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Porter. Thank you. On the um, schedule highlights page with the educational planning, um, so I see you have a, a SPED meeting and a CTE meeting. Were there other departments that get a meeting? Like, um, I'm thinking like guidance or ELL, or is that included in just the general program, the fourth bullet that's uh, programming administration? Is that where yeah. you take care of all the other departments? Yeah, those will, be, those will be talked about with those groups at that time. And also the teacher surveys gives them the, the teachers of those groups or it's not just teachers, but those you know, facility people have the chance to talk at those time too on so, their surveys. So cafeteria workers, custodians, everybody gets input into how their area yes. functions. And okay, so yes. that's just on the fourth bullet. Yes. Thank you. One of the things is that why some of these groups are addressed now. One of the decisions that will be have to be made was. Um, there is special needs in each one of the schools. Does it make more sense to have it in one school and because of the cost of the equipment and staff needed? Um, so that's something the Board of Ed will have to determine. Mr. Greeno. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have a quick question. Um, on the traffic analysis, um, is that at all the middle school locations? Or is that just at the new and the, and the Elm Street? We're not picturing it at all. It's a part of the discussion is happening at our office right now to see which ones really need it. Um, I don't feel like it's going to be all of them, but I, I don't want to be stuck, you know, saying no uh, or yes. But I, what I think it is definitely going to be is the new site. That's a, that's a given. Um, we're also thinking Penachuk probably needs it because that will ha potentially could have some increased... Um, students depending on which path is chosen um, fairgrounds is pretty even so that one might be one you know that one may or may not need it and then um, and the paths that are being looked at right now I'm not sure that Elm Street is necessarily affected as far as traffic goes we know we know the status of where that kind of stands as far as how it operates is you know where the buses go and stuff like that but that one is a that one's still a questionable one that we have to have a little further discussion mm -hmm. on so that, that's part of the discussions we're having a little bit today, but mostly it's going to be tomorrow we're starting to talk about so we can get Sean the information that he needs to facilitate, uh, facilitate uh, or so solicit uh, proposals. So. Okay. Alderman Clean. Thank you. Um, as, as part of your facilities analysis report, does that include, um, like, the HVAC system and so on? And the reason I ask this, it was just sometimes a little knowledge is is very dangerous, but we just had um, the Nashua Police Department come in because they need to upgrade their HVAC system and, and air conditioning. And one of the things that they said, which kind of stuck to me, was that in 2020 or 2021, the the chemical that we use 
the coolant has to change, which means upgrading the entire system. Okay. Does that mean that as you're working on these three schools, we would have to do something like that for these schools also? Um, the, I stumbled through the facility analysis report uh, section, but yes, the mechanical engineers, the electrical engineers, all those guys are going through um, and, and looking at the entire system, what's in there, getting information from Gary and Sean um, as need be to help you know, tell us when things are put in. They have all the reports and stuff and documents. Um, and looking at things like you're suggesting, you know, some of the recommendations may say, this unit uses this refrigeration as an, just as an example, and uh, by 2021, this this product should be, you know, removed per what you know per whatever regulation or whatever it might be. So the answer is yes. We are looking at all those systems um, and documenting them, and then we'll have recommendations. Um, and I think that you know it's not something that would necessarily be part of this project. I think that's something you guys would have to decide further well, once we have that full report. Um, but it'll outline those items that should be taken care of in, in, in our opinion, based on you know, not our, our expertise. Just a couple of points. Um, in the police department, their HIVAC system is 44 years old, and they use Freon, which if they lose it, you can't get it anymore. And um, the federal government doesn't want you to use it. Um, when we're looking at, at a new school, obviously we'll be using an up-to-date state-of-the-art system. Um, the HIVAC system at uh, Elm Street is probably also an antique. Um, at Penichuk, um, you would probably have to look at it closely because if we we're going to be adding up to 10 additional classrooms, you know, can the system handle it? Is it system needs to be replaced now? If we're going to touch it, we're going to only touch it once. Um, and we don't have air conditioning except in very limited spaces. In fact, fairgrounds might be the only one that has part of the school air conditioned. But the police department's air conditioned 24-7 around the, so. Alderman Clean. Thank you. It was just that um, I was stunned when um, one of the comments that they had made was anything older than 10 years old needs has the old stuff that would need to be replaced as of 2021. Mm. Um, that I found that quite surprising, and then I looked into it, so I don't know how accurate that's. That's why I said a little knowledge sometimes yeah, is very dangerous. I don't think they said anything about in 10 years. I mean, you wouldn't use Freon now anyway. It's not allowed, but go ahead. Yeah, also, uh, the, the year depends on the type of equipment. I know like boilers tend to last longer than mechanical units. There's less moving parts. The other thing is air quality, is the ventilation. Some of the systems are so old, there's very little ventilation, so we'll report on the, what they call cubic feet per, per minute for students if they're below standards that will be brought up. So it's also not just the systems, but it's also the requirements for air quality and things of that nature. And also looking at the expandability of these systems, if you're gonna add something to Elm Street or, or Fairgrounds, we gotta make sure that the boiler plant has the capacity. If it doesn't, that means replacing boilers, not because they're old, but because they don't have enough capacity. Intercom systems, telephone systems, uh, fire alarm systems, those all gotta be compatible to expand. If they're not, that, that may be a decision to be made because of the expandability, mm -hmm. not to factor that it's old. So we look at relatively a variety of uh, indicators to make recommendations. Okay. Anyone else have a question? No? Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Smith. Uh, so, j just to follow on that last bit, we've pretty much, those regulations have been out for a good number of years, I wanna say 15, 20 years, so we've kind of stayed abreast of them and. It, I think we're actually in pretty good shape as far as that goes. Um, so the, in front of you is the financial report. So this is the, for those of you that are new to uh, this sort of construction process, this is the sheet we've been using um, for 20 plus years. Uh, right now it has um, all the major areas on the description, all the major areas that we expect to have to hire firms and then uh, you know, develop a budget for them and then approve invoices. Uh, 
So this is the form we use for improving invoices and keeping track of the budget. And as you can see, we've got our very first uh, invoice um, from Harriman, right on the heels of that contract finally being signed. <laughs> yeah, I was going to point that out, that the uh, contract's finally been approved through the attorneys, and I've signed it, and it is now official, and that's why we have our first invoice. I will need a motion to uh, approve the invoice to um, Harriman A and E for thirty six thousand eight hundred eighty dollars and forty six cents. Question? Yes, oh, Alderman Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So on, on the invoice thing. Um, Alderman Jetty. So on the invoice, um, I noticed, and I, I, I know that when we're when you look at um, the architect's uh, fees, this is a, these are peanuts compared to that. But I couldn't help but notice uh, the invoice states car rentals for various dates. Does that mean when I don't know where you guys are coming from? Portland and you rent a car to come here is that that's correct okay to, to, to actually get into the I, I've been asked that many times in different projects if you take the mileage we use per or require uh, allowed by federal it's I believe 55 cents per mile if you calculate that we have such a good rental rate that we actually beat those uh, uh, amounts of reimbursement by renting the cars because it's inclusive and we get a better rate so if you do the calculation by us using our own vehicle and charging the, the rate by miles, it's actually a little bit cheaper to rent the car for the same period of time. And it's just something that has worked out, and we, we've done the math both ways. All the firms will be, that we've used coming from out of town particularly, but um, all charge a mileage fee or rental. Um, the rentals tend to be cheaper when they come over. They come home several in one car, I believe. They, they don't take, all take their own cars. Uh, so some of them each we've had five or six of them. So um, it's a standard, standard uh, cost that we incur, and it's part of the bid price. Okay, thank you. Any other questions before we approve? I'm going to make the motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve. Um, $36,880.46 to Harriman. Mm -hmm. Okay, the motion on the floor is to approve the payment of the invoice from Harriman A&E for the amount of $36,880.46. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. So you'll likely see this uh, financial sheet every month that we meet. Uh, and uh, the number that you see is the pro proposed budget, $300,000 is how much the city is authorized thus far. And that's intended to be for phase one, which is the assessment phase that we're currently in. Um, so other, other notes on here, you'll see down there towards the bottom, Harvey Construction, GMP. So that's guaranteed maximum price. You'll get more familiar with that as this process moves along. But once the total scope of the, of the work is identified, uh, all the plans have been prepared, Harvey's had a chance to assess it, then they're going to give us a guaranteed maximum price. So the, the, the total budget can't get over that uh, and, unless there are change orders, you know, drastic change orders. Um, but uh, so Carl will uh, uh, swear to us that that's the price, maximum price, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, just for clarification purposes for those at home, this three hundred thousand dollars is really just the upfront pre-construction cost, not the cost of the project. <laughs> then I'll be given a guaranteed maximum. Mm. Right. So the way. The way this works is this first year doing this analysis of uh, which way to go. And after we have the public hearings and this group determines the, the course of action going forward, uh, from um, then we turn the architects on to do a complete drawing package 
So the price can be bid by the contract man, the construction manager rather, and um, um, we have a final price, which then we'll have to approve bonding for, whichever way we go, and and the bonding price will the bonding limit will be based on what we were just talking about that guaranteed um, maximum price, um, and also all the groups involved, the city, the architect and the construction manager all have contingency packages. So when unknown unknowns pop up, one of those three groups is gonna cover the cost. So it depends on what it is at the time. But we, so we don't have to keep going back to the bonding well. And I will tell you that the last five projects we've done have come in ahead of schedule and under budget, and we have allocated those funds forward. We allocated some of the funds from the last project to this project. So um, when we come up with a price, it's, it's uh, considered a, a valid price that, uh, that we can work with. Okay, Mr. Smith. So the next thing I have to talk about are some uh, additional services. So these come under the <coughs> When we talk about construction, you talk about hard construction costs, that's primarily Harvey. <laughs> Everything else is considered a soft construction cost, and that's what these things are a part of. Um, so the first one I'll talk about is the is a spreadsheet here, uh, bid comparison, uh, middle school surveying companies. So we prepared a, a request for proposals, went out in the street, uh, was posted on the, the city's website, and we had five responses by the deadline of April 4th. Uh, you can see that the uh, pricing ranged from 36,000 up to 97,000. That's actually a pretty widespread. Um, so taking a look at that uh, and talking it over with uh, Harriman's Architects, uh, we figured we'd better narrow the scope down a little bit more, be a little more specific. So we did that and then sent out some additional documentation to the firms that bid originally, and three of them came back. And you can see the pricing. Um, you know, they're all actually relatively close to each other. So uh, the, 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 the top two firms were Hart, Hainer Swanson of Nashua and uh, GM2 was out of uh, Concord. Um, Hainer Swanson, the uh, bid price was 46750 There's an additional price of 2500 for wetland mapping. Um, so where that is needed is at the proposed construction site. We expect up back away from Cherrywood Road, there are some wetlands. So we, we need to have somebody assess those. Um, so GM2 included the wetland mapping in their price of 47950 um, I'm personally, uh, these are all good companies, by the way. We, we've heard them all, or else we've, we've worked with a, a number of them. Worked an awful lot with Hainer Swanson, and they're right here in town. Um, I am a little bit torn between the two. Uh, uh, GM2 is the lower price of the two, you know, $47,950. Uh, but Hainer Swanson is right here in Nashville, and they've done excellent work for us. Um, so I feel some allegiance to them at all as well. But um, if you want to go strictly on the price, uh, it'd be a GM2. If you want to give a uh, some, I don't know what the right word is, dispensation for the local company right here in Nashua, then it would be Hainer Swanson. I don't think dispensation is the right word. Uh, but um, typically what we've done over the last decades that have been involved in school construction. We don't, we don't have to pick the low bidder. Uh, we try to go with companies that we're very familiar with, done work with us before and been successful. And we also try to the best extent possible to try to give work to a national firm. So that's why uh, when I'm looking at this, uh, uh, the, school, the schools have done extensive work with Hainer Swanson. They do great work and they, here in Nashua. Um, and unless it, there's a significant price difference, which there isn't here, uh, my suggestion would be Hainer Swanson, Aldo and Klee. Have we worked with all of these companies before, all three of them, or just the Hainers? 
Swanson. Um, for the city of Nashua, Hainer Swanson uh, worked some with Dubois King, I believe. The other three I have not. I don't know if uh, Harriman has, uh, Jamie. The, the surveying company, the question was, have we worked with these other companies? Uh, which really just means uh, Alexander and Major because they're the other firm that's, or GM2. Have you worked with them? It's just leading up to the question of how much do we know that they stay within what they what they say that they'll be, or do they come in afterwards with other issues that they came? I, I like the fact that Haynard Swanson uh, pulled out their wetland mapping, so we know specifically what they're charging for that. I mean, I, so my concern is, do they come in afterwards and say, "Oh no, we we ran into this issue or that issue"? Is this a common? or is yeah. not on something like this. The original specification was you gave them a wide open and when you give somebody a thing like that, they're gonna cover themselves nine ways to Sunday because the scope is not clear. That's why we went back with, and re redefined the scope of what we wanted them to do. Now they come back and say, okay, now we know what you want us to do and they priced it. Um, to the best of my knowledge, Sean, we've never had any problems whatsoever with Hainer Swanson and they've done a lot of work for us. Correct. Thank you. Yes, Mrs. Odin. Thank you. I'm just looking at their original estimated costs. It's substantially higher than the other well, four companies, not, not so much the last one. And then they became very competitive. What would have caused that um, very high number on the first estimated cost. Because they're aware of where the costs can go if you don't specify exactly what you want them to do. Um, they are extremely familiar with all the national schools and, and in past projects, if, if, if you don't specify exactly what you want them to do, then they're going to cover themselves anticipating that you could ask for not just A and B, but A, B, C, D, and E, and it's gonna be more expensive, and um, it would be an issue if they exceed their costs. So um, that's why we went back and narrowed our scope. Um, I guess I would also say, I, I talked to them quite a bit, um, and specifically what they did with the initial, original number was assume they were doing a survey of the entire site of each of the three schools plus the proposed site. Uh, we, after we narrow the scope down, for example, at Penichuk, we're looking at just doing <coughs> either side of the school, so, so in the very front of the school, very back of the school, and a small piece sliver going out around the, the tennis courts. Um, they had originally had done the entire site, uh, which was a safe thing for them to, to, to do. Um, same thing at Fairgrounds Middle School. We're no longer, as you know, looking to add a wing at the back of the school because the architect has indicated that they think everything can fit. You know, we just have to reconfigure inside. So what Hainer Swanson did originally is they put down a price for the survey the entire site. Now we know they're just doing a piece of it mainly in front, um, whereas we're looking at parking and traffic flow. So that, that's, I guess, the short answer. Thank you. Any other questions? Just one more thing. So I know that uh, GM2, their price for the wetland mapping was uh, $4,000. Um, Hainer Swanson actually is going to sub that piece out to a firm that specializes in it. And that's where the 2500 came from. So I'll make a motion that we award the uh, surveying company bid to Hainer Swanson of National New Hampshire in the amount of $46,750 plus the $2,500 for wetland mapping. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Smith. Okay, so the second uh, contract we like to award tonight uh, was geotechnical. So uh, geotechnical are the, are the people that actually do a lot of um, viewing underneath the surface. So 
they're going to do borings. Uh, they're going to actually potentially bring in a, an excavator and pull away the, the, the top layers and, and see what's underneath it. And then they document all that. And then the architect needs that. So if, if we're going to be putting in, well, even roads, but also uh, especially the foundations for schools, and they need to know what's underneath there, if it's all sand or if there's some ledge, that sort of thing. So we, uh, again, uh, put out the uh, solicitation. Um, those bids were due back on April 2nd. Uh, you can see the range wasn't quite as bad as the surveying, but uh, still went from six to 24. Um, we uh, identified some, uh, some scope issues there as well and went out for a best and final. And again, it came back very close. Uh, so your two um, main competitors are SW Cole of Londonderry and MMI out of Bedford, New Hampshire. Um, I'm familiar with uh, John Turner, SW Cole, um, R.W. Gillespie. Those are three that I know I've worked with. I don't know if you've worked with any other ones, Jamie, that you could... Terracon is another one we've worked with. Okay. Who? I've worked with Nobis on a project, a school project okay. as well. So um, the, the cheapest price uh, is MMI out of Bedford. I see, see no reason not to uh, go with them. Uh, so from, Discussion? From Nashua. Motion? <laughs> yes, Mrs. Porter. Okay, so that's a big range. So like, what would you get extra for 21000 that you wouldn't get for 10000 Larger bill. So they're doing exactly the same thing? They're, they're supposed to no be doing exactly the same thing. Quality issues or? Uh, no, that, well, so, some, uh, we, we even told them how to dig to deep. Uh, yeah. How, how deep, deep to, to dig, dig the hole. Yes. <laughs> the hole or the bars. Yes. And so, some of them just assumed it was going to be 20 feet or 30 feet. Uh, we told them 10 feet. Okay. Um, Mr. Dubois? Certain companies don't actually own the drilling equipment. They'll hire they'll sub out the drilling equipment themselves. So that may be part of what you're seeing here. Alderman Jetty. So I move that we award the uh, contract to MMI. Mike, your microphone. Mike. I move that we uh, award the contract to MMI in the amount of $9,200. Okay, the motion on the floor is to award the Geotechnical services to MMI of Bedford, New Hampshire in the amount of $9,200. Any further discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So Just two more sweep. items. Uh, one, we currently have an RFP out in the street for the industrial hygienists. Those are the people that will go into the schools, uh, take samples, identify clearly where uh, you have asbestos, uh, lead paint, uh, PCBs, that sort of thing. Um, once all those are identified, that's also the same company that's going to then uh, prepare the uh, specifications for a, a hazmat company to come and do the remediation for you. Um, so that'll be awarded at, our, at the next joint special at the end of May. Um, one thing, uh, so we're looking at the schedule, what information do we need to have by the end of May? And the hygienists, we don't have to, but it'll, be sh it'll short, follow shortly. But a traffic analysis, which we discussed briefly, um, the, the architects indicated they need the information sooner than later. So we put our heads together and try to figure out approximately what that would cost. We figured about $5,000. Uh, does that number still sound good? Okay, um, so we're asking for your, your uh, approval in advance to um, award a contract to a company for an amount not to exceed $5,000. And then I'll follow the same process, same RFP. It will be a public uh, bid uh, project. Uh, we'll also send it to known firms that we deal with. That, um, and then next month I'll tell you what happened in this is not out of the ordinary because of timing, and we need to get that traffic study done. So 
when we have a, an, a, a motion from this committee that's not to exceed, uh, if the bids come in under it, we're all set. If they come in over it, it'll have to come back to the committee. So if there's no Alderman Clee. I'd like to make the motion to allow um, Mr. Smith <coughs> excuse me, to uh, award a contract not to exceed $5,000 for the traffic analysis. Motion on the floor is to uh, allow the um, committee to enter into a contract with the traffic manager for a contract not to exceed $5,000. Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Smith? Uh, I believe that's all I have for tonight. Okay. Public comment? <laughs> um, comments by committee members? Nope. You don't have a need for non-public. Do I hear a motion? A motion oh. to adjourn? <laughs> I'm assuming that was a motion to adjourn. I couldn't understand what you was. <laughs> the motion on the floor is to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned at 746.